He is a Pro Football Hall of Famer, Canton class of 2015 after a long wait. He's a Heisman Trophy winner. He's in the College Football Hall of Fame. He is known as Mr. Raider, so he knows all about this rivalry. Please welcome back to the Rich Eisen Show, one Tim Brown. How are you, Tim? I'm good, Rich. How are you, brother? I'm great. What does this rivalry bring back for you, memory-wise, Raiders Chiefs? Well, for for a lot of years, Rich, it was it was no good for us, man. <laughs> you know, we had we had several years there, man, in the uh, in the nineties where we couldn't we couldn't touch this team. You know, it was just impossible for us to win a game in um, in Kansas City, and we struggled to win games against them in L.A. and uh, up in Oakland. So uh, when Gruden got there, things changed. You know, we competed hard against them in ninety eight, and then. Uh, last game in 99, I think it actually was played in early January uh, 2000. You know, we beat those guys when they had a chance to, to wrap up AFC West. And I really think that catapulted us to the next you know three years of uh, that game. And knowing that we could beat the Chiefs on the road in a game that they had to have was something that we talked about all that offseason and, uh, you know, helped us to do what we did the next three years. So do you think this, this year's Raiders team needs that sort of type of win in order to go where they want to go, certainly this year, Tim? Yeah, you know, I, I think, man, you know, they won a game this year that they probably shouldn't have won. You know, you look at the Jacksonville game, they set the NFL record for penalties, you know. Uh, that's not really a game that uh, you think any team is going to win if, if they have that, that many mistakes. Uh, but uh, yet and still, man, they've been able to win football games, you know. So um, I think if they can go out and play a clean game, man, you know, this this should be a very competitive game, but I think it's a game the Raiders should win. And if they can win a game like this on the road, that should give them the confidence that they can go and do anything they have to do the rest of the year. So what are you seeing out of Amari Cooper, Tim, that makes you think uh, he's got greatness in him? Uh, well, you know, he's so cool, calm, and collected. But, I mean, you know, everything about his game says I'm in control, you know. And I um, know he's been a little beat up the last couple of weeks, so they hadn't gone to him that much. But when they've had the opportunity to put the ball in his hands, man, he's made plays, you know. So, uh, you know, you think back on that play he made in uh, – uh, in Houston, in, the, in Mexico against uh, against Houston, it's a remarkable play. I mean, it looked like it was going to be a five year game, five yard game, and he turned it into a thirty five yard touchdown. You know, so uh, plays like that that only he can make uh, on this team, I think, is the reason why this guy is destined for continued greatness, man. T- Tim Brown here on the Rich Eisen Show. I had Marcus Allen on in hour number two because he knows both sides of this rivalry, and I have been very. Mm-hmm. Raiders heavy on this show, also with Tom Flores on the program. I got a lot of Chiefs fans complaining that I'm in Kansas City having too much silver and black here, but I guess that's the nature of the beast here. He said it was awkward for him playing against the Raiders because of all the guys that he had to play against, and you were one of the guys, I assume, that he felt awkward playing against. What was it like remembering when he put on the red for the first time? Yeah, you know, I, I'm I'm just happy that I wasn't on defense. And I can remember the guys on defense, Eddie Anderson and um, Terry McDaniel and Lionel watching those guys just saying, man, we can't hit them. You know, it's like we go to tackle them and we, it's like our hands just won't stick to them or something, man. You know, I mean, it was so much love, you know, between Marcus and, and the Raiders and the guys who he left behind. That you know, I mean, you know, for for most guys, no matter what, you can get up for it, and you can you can get that that passion you need of whatever that anger or whatever. Not 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 against Marcus, man. And every time we played against him, he broke some record. It seems like, and uh, it was just very difficult to uh, very difficult to um, you know to for the guys to do what they need to do. And Coach Flores on earlier, and Marcus too. I asked him the same question: What happened between Marcus and Al? What did happen? They didn't give me much of an answer because they don't, neither of them really knew what happened. What do you think? I know you. I know you and Al had your your tangles, but yeah, you know, I mean, and one of my big tangles was because of what had happened with Marcus, and and I didn't want to be in that same position. So you know, I mean, when they when I signed a deal with the Broncos and they brought me back, uh, me and Al had a six hour conversation, and you know, part of that conversation, a big part of that conversation was why in the world would you treat a guy who is such a great player? And great teammate, why would you treat him so bad? And um, so, you know, he had some answers that I didn't necessarily agree with. And it seems like it was a lot of, you know, he say, he say stuff. But at the same time, you know, uh, if a guy's producing for you on the field and it's not a problem in the locker room, whatever personal stuff is going on shouldn't be, you know. And I think that thing just got out of hand and it became real personal later on. And I know Marcus at some point at the Hall of Fame deal 
walked up to him and tried to, you know, shake his hand and, and put bygones behind. But, you know, he wasn't willing to do that. And, you know, Mr. Davis mm. was a stubborn man, but at the same time, he has his reasons for doing things. And, and you know, it, it is what it is. And I'm with Tim Brown here uh, on the Rich Eisen Show. It seems like things have gotten personal for your, your fellow Hall of Famer, Eric Dickerson, with the Rams. And, <laughs> you know, quite <laughs> quite personal right now and i'm just wondering you know the raiders have a whole host of hall of fame legends who come to the games and the sidelines have you ever felt uh trouble criticizing the raiders in the years when obviously you were out and seeing what was going on on the field tim oh uh, no i i've never felt pressured not to do what 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 i wanted to do but i know when i do criticize then i'm going to get feedback <laughs> <laughs> I know that there's a phone call coming or a text coming uh, from huh. from a couple of folks who who I'm pretty connected with, who are not going to agree with what I say. But at the same time, you know, uh, what they know about me is that I am going to always speak my mind and speak, you know, what's best for the team and not what's best for, you know, so much the organization. But uh, it, it's a tough position to be in, man. Especially if you're working. Especially if you're you know, you're in the media, you have a gig, you know, you want to be able to speak the truth and speak, speak what, uh, what you believe is going to happen. But sometimes you have these relationships with these organizations, man, that, that will, will, you know, conflict with what you're doing. So I think that's the most difficult thing for, for, for former players, especially guys who play well, or, you know, guys who, you know, in the hall of fame, like ED. Tim Brown, first wide receiver to ever win a Heisman trophy here on the Rich Eisen show. Who'd you vote for, for this year's Heisman? Can you tell? Well, you know, we can't tell, Rich. You know, we can't tell. But, uh, you know, I can tell you this. This was a very difficult year, man. Uh, you know, when you look at all the um, the guys who are out there and, uh, you know, my whole deal is I always trying to look for a guy who who was similar to me, you know, um, looking for a guy who tried to do it all, you know. So, obviously, a guy like Jabril Peppers comes to mind. and uh, But I love Devon Cook, man, and he wasn't even on the list. You know, I thought this guy was a phenomenal football player. Uh, you know, but, uh, you know, Jackson's numbers are remarkable. And, you know, a lot of things he did uh, during the season were incredible. So so I, it's going to be interesting to see what happens, man. I think this is going to be a very close vote or, or, or it's going to be a blowout, I believe. But, um, you know, I think uh, anyway, anyway it goes, it's going to be a, a very exciting weekend. Did I just hear a Golden Domer s just even insinuate that he voted for a Wolverine? Did I just did I just hear that? correctly into my my well, headset I, I just mentioned I names brother okay don't don't okay. insinuate anything i just mentioned okay. names right mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and how, how oh, much hey, call me on monday i'll let you know who i voted for right? <laughs> <laughs> i will do that and last one for you is is how much do you think the weather is going to factor in tonight you know because we we make so much of it we're all sitting out in it and obviously there's a team from northern california that doesn't really live in it when they go outside in life in general so what do sure, you think about sure. that for tonight tim well you know what we used to always say is hey we hey we we're only going to be here for three hours they got to live in it so let's let's go do what we have to do and get up out of here uh you know that being said it's all about the field man if the field is in good 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 condition i think they'll be fine you know when they played the last time it was a rainstorm in in oakland and uh, and there were all kinds of problems holding on to the ball and footing, footing and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, I think from that standpoint, man, the cold is cold. But, you know, if you can't run routes, if you can't stand up, you can't get your track tracking, then it's going to be tough. But, um, you know, so but that's one of the best fields in, in the league, man. And I don't think that that's going to be a problem because there's not supposed to be any precipitation. So hopefully that stays the way it is. Tim, thanks for calling in. Always love catching up with you when you're down in Los Angeles. If you ever are, I'd love to have you in studio. Love to have you in there. Will do, brother. Appreciate you, man. Always. 81 Tim Brown on Twitter. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.